This might get weird. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Well, then cheers, Grace Helbig. Cheers, Memory Heart. Woo-woo. We are recording. You're in a new place. You're in a hotel room in Florida. No, I'm in New York right now. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Never in, mind. I'm in Brooklyn, our old stomping grounds wow. right now. And uh, we'll soon be in Florida. There will be episodes that we will record where I will be coming from Florida. But See, enjoying... I thought you looked chic, and I thought the hotel looked chic. And I was like, wow, she's really coming so studious to the panhandle. Yeah, no, I couldn't wear it. The humidity <laughs> that's happening down there, I couldn't yeah. wear this. I'd die. Uh, no, I'm in beautiful, overcast Brooklyn right now. It is Love gorgeous. It. Floods of memories of the good old days ah, back ah. here in Brooklyn. So, so far it's been very fun. I, sorry, I just had to pick up Bean. She, I was saying to you, she ate two bites of food. So she comes and does like a victory motorboat yeah. beside me. Yeah. So if you hear scratching, it's, it's Bean's going absolutely ham. Beside yeah, me. Beans, congrats. <laughs> Excellent Spe- job. I think everyone should celebrate when they've eaten a good meal. That's what I'm screaming. I'm um, speaking of celebrating and going ham. Let's yeah. get right into yeah. it because I'm not going to keep you from that balmy Brooklyn day. Thank um, you so much. Let's, like we have been doing, get into Drag Race because you know what? We've only got a couple more episodes to talk about this season. And did you see the announcement today? That Ru- RuPaul announced uh, they're retiring. They're stepping <gasps> down. No! I just Wait. saw this is announced like three hours ago on Twitter. And let me make sure it was on. I saw the uh, Wow account tweeted it yeah. out like a message from Mother. Uh, and it said that after, you know, years and years, she is finally stepping down and uh, has made the final announcement. Wow, that's massive. I mean, the fact is, well, I wonder who her predecessor, is predecessor the right word? I think so. Um, w- I wonder who will take over, because, like, obviously they're not going to shut down this cash cow. Like, right. well, Mas- Michelle Visage, is she going to take over? You know, is it going right. to be a previous winning queen? I wouldn't mind if it was Sasha Colby. Um, right? There's lots of options, I feel like. I- yeah, she has been... She's after 16 years and 40 seasons across seven U.S. Wow. and U.K. franchises. RuPaul has decided to step down as the host and main judge of RuPaul's Drag Race, which makes me think, oh, is she going to come back as a guest judge occasionally? Oh, maybe. You know, it also, I mean, it makes sense because, you know, you're just doing the same thing over and over. And you could kind of tell maybe RuPaul was dabbling more and more with eating a gummy before coming to work, you know, and <laughs> yeah. her laughing at, at Lazy Susan that much. But also, I wonder if Ru has been wanting to do this, but was like waiting for a good seat. Like, like yeah. you know what I mean? When you're when you're like, oh, but I want to end on a good note. Well, I don't yeah. want to walk away from the poker table, you know, like just feeling like shit. Yeah. So maybe she was like, OK, I'm feeling good enough about this season for it to be the last one I hosted. Yeah, I think that she wants to obviously go out on a bang, but it's yeah. also just been incredible. She's 63 years old. Insane. Sh- and looks stunning every week. And I mean, I put on like a a collared shirt under a sweatshirt and I'm like, this is a lot. I can't imagine how taxing it is week after yeah. week to be that gorgeous. Uh, but I am curious. Yeah. What happens from here? We'll Who is going to take over? Okay. Yeah. There was, next week, let's come with our three ideas for possible taking over Rue's place of former queens who've, who've competed. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I, we can do that for sure. Um, I'm into but, it. Okay. Yep. But let's get in. This was um, – what I loved about this episode, I yeah. really like this episode. Okay. Is that, um, is that normally when it's here, it's the Rue mix. And right. they're doing the song with the dance. And I really like that they mixed it up. I really like um, that they did a writing challenge with a photo shoot, with having to get, you know, like a little, yeah. an interview personal. Um, however, I will say, with them having to write down stories for the book, they should have released them somewhere online. That's what I mean. Okay, my big question mark about this whole episode was that... Yeah. Uh, This is so strange because the audience does not get to see a huge portion of what they're being judged on. So Mm -hmm. it feels like they did this in a way that they could behind the scenes manipulate more of the outcome without it being Uh. like, that's just my own 
conspiracy no, theories. No, it totally I, makes sense. When the episode ended, I was like, what did we actually get to see? Like, their book mm. covers, we saw that. The, uh, the concept, we heard. We heard loosely, like, the types of stories they wrote, but we never got to see, like, any of the actual writing and i was like this is so hysterical of a co like a challenge write a right. book what <laughs> well you know i guess i'm i'm assuming uh, yeah. i would love for a, a drag race producer to chime in i'm assuming they had them write like a three-page story sure yeah. or like a three-page like this is what my book would be about you know yeah. kind of thing but I was just like how are we not throwing up a QR code how are we yeah. not saying you know <laughs> and go download this and you'll really you know that would have been a yeah. moment to like have some away from the show more added promotion um but I will say is this normally the episode where they do the Tic Tac interview Yes. So they they did so many things different. This so episode. many things. They didn't do the normal like write your song number and learn the choreography and you're going to be in this music video. They didn't do the Tic Tac interview. They didn't do the here's a photo of your old self talk to you as a child, which they usually do where RuPaul well, holds up that photo. I will say. I was fine not doing Same. the kid photo thing. I didn't even know until I went on Twitter that it was missing from this episode. I was honestly relieved. Yeah, I because I feel like all the queens know that that's coming, so they all, like, rehearse the thing that yes. they're going to say. And it's incredibly emotional. Obviously, it's meant to be. But I feel like over the years, it hasn't been as, like... You just see it so many times that it loses its, like, genuine... It started to feel like prepared answers from beauty queens. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's not like, I understand the first season and even some other, like if they didn't know when it was coming. Yeah. And and it was like, well, sometimes we do the top four, sometimes we do the top eight, like whatever it is. And it's like, oh my God. But like, they know they submitted a child photo. Yeah. They know, you know, and I just yeah. felt like it became, it became, please prepare a dramatic monologue. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I was good. They didn't do that. However, I will say with the Matt Rogers interview, mm -hmm. I feel like you know, Nymphia opened up. We got like a lot more into that, which I loved. But they didn't, I feel like they were kind of doing that in lieu of Tic Tac and the kids photo. Yeah. And the thing is, is Matt Rogers is a comedian. His yeah. podcast is La Culturistas with Bo and Yang. He is yeah. a funny dude. Yeah. So I kind of, I thought plain kind of got fucked a little bit yeah. because according to editing, she went first. But also if I was going to sit down with Matt Rogers, I'd be like, oh, they want me to be funny. I want to make this entertaining. Yeah. yeah. And also, she was, at least from what she said, playing it in the plain Jane character. She wasn't. Yes. And Opening the rest up. of the queens were dressed as the, like, themselves, as the queen, but, like, were talking as themselves. So it was, like, a confusing of, like, what, what are they supposed to do? And mm -hmm. is it that open-ended? I will say, though, the book covers, Nymphia's book cover... Yeah. Amazing. Q's book cover. I am so confused, confused. by that beige outfit. Like the beige truly, outfit. As soon as she came out in that, I was like, Q's going home. Yeah, same. I was like, something happened to another outfit. This must be a last minute choice. Because in what world does this represent what I think I know of Q? Q? Like, no, Q came out and I said, that's Charlotte Roos baby shower. <laughs> Yeah. Like, like, which goes against every other thing we've seen, which right. I understand, like, mix it up, do something. But, like, that exact same book cover, yeah. if she had been in, like, a sleek, plunging, red, slim power suit yeah, yeah, or yeah. something, would have looked, I mean, it would have changed the whole game. Yeah. Or it's, like, it's alphabet soup, I think, was, like, one of the part of her title that it's, like, put on a little apron or a bowl or use props. I don't know. It just felt so much like this was the last costume she had left that she hadn't worn and she had yeah. to throw it on for this. And I was soaked because she came out after Nymphia who looked amazing and did amazing. amazing in her photo shoot. And then Safira comes out after Q with this 15 foot ponytail and looks incredible. Mm -hmm. And then Plain comes out and looks, you know, how I expect Plain would look of like tight body suit, uh, though the hair they had much to say about. The hair was too small. They should have gone huge. Also, yeah. my big question with this 
book cover yeah. thing is as someone who's currently in design edits for a book, <laughs> yeah. um, how much input did they get on the actual graphic right. design? Because yeah. if I, again, just using Q as an example, I would be like, oh no, I wore gold. It yeah. shouldn't be primary colors behind me that will clash. So yeah. I wonder if they're surprised with the book cover and yeah. they're just doing like a photo shoot because I think that makes a huge difference, which is why it was very smart of um, Safira and Nymphia, whether it was intentional or not, to just make it like this cool Missy Elliott pose and be yeah. like, I don't need anything behind me. Yeah, I thought that Nymphia's was just like the white background with her posing was amazing. And then they had like, plain Jane's like I'm walking away from disaster or something whatever it was oh, and it oh, looked so poorly photoshopped so that I was like that looks like shit compared it looks like to shit others. it absolutely did and I was writing notes for drag race and during it let me, I wrote yeah. I wrote like do you think they get input on graphic design um like did plane really want that plane crash behind her oh my right. god did I just realize that plane crash is a pun on plain Jane yeah yeah I I did not. I was truly yeah. like, did plane Jane survive a tragic plane crash? Not even putting oh. two and two together. Oh. I had been having drinks. I watched it in real time yeah. on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, because it's P L A N E is her first yes. name. I think, right? It's not spelled P L A I N. Right. I think. Yeah. I think. Um, yeah. It, mi it mirrors Jane, but, but I just then, had no idea. I And then, oh, this is the other note that I had. Uh, Look, I love Q, and maybe that's because my bar for aesthetic is set so high. But Q also came out to the interview with Matt Rogers in, like, a very strange look that I can't remember now. But I feel like it was, like, oh, sophisticated. It looked like almost like a real housewife, like, with, like, gray hair or something and, like, black lacy something. And I was like, this is... She's starting to look like Susie from Curb Your Enthusiasm. And yeah, I'm like, what, what, what is Plain's... Or not playing. What is Q's brand, actually? Well, I thought it was a uh, sophisticated fashion clown. Right. And it, honestly, okay, here's what I'll say. This week made it feel like she only packed till last week. Right. That's what it felt. Yeah. That I was like, oh, shoot. Are her looks running out? Like, what yes. a, that, I mean, I can't imagine how difficult that is behind the scenes. But also think about it. Like, I feel like all the girls were surprised with this challenge. So yeah. they probably they probably packed being like, well, I have something to wear in the room mix. And then it was yeah. like, no, you need a book cover. You need an interview. You need a, you know what I mean? It, yeah. it like kind of switch it up. I will say I loved, again, the switch up this uh, final four and that there was still a theme to the runway and it wasn't yeah. just eleganza or whatever. Yeah. Like there was still like a fun object you could play with and the reveal from Safira when the fans came yes. out like it was just the best fandango and here's what i thought which no one pointed out that i remember so correct me if i'm wrong that q came out in that like tutu and i was like what an amazing bookend to her opening to the uh yeah ballerina, ballerina in the talent show but i don't think anyone actually said that i was like is that because that's like that to me is like so smart and so right. genius to be like Remember this from the beginning. I'm ending it, but I'm still, you know, checking off the brief at the same time. And I was like, this <laughs> Too bad is great. Plane, plane should have come out doing burger finger again. They right. would have been like, we're good. We're good you with know, those huge tits, except, Jimbo. Uh, Rue would have loved it for some reason because yes. Rue loves burger finger for some reason. Rue just loves plane. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I thought the, this final three is who. I feel like is correct. Yeah, but wow, how tra I feel for Q because how tragic because everyone you know is up in the air of there's no definitive uh, top number that they have consecutively been doing or consistently been doing. So you assume oh they're all great. It's probably going to be a top four. That pause that Rue had to Q before saying thank yeah. you for being here. Oh gut-wrenching devastating it had all the makings of Shantae you also stay I and, know and it, and it was like oh what a gut punch so I I feel for Q like that I do is too. wild I will say I know that maybe I'm wrong but how old is Q I think um, she's young I think they're all I, like mid -20s. I think she's young too I feel like Q would kill this if if she was like 30 
Yeah, like, and add, she also like four or five more years of really like really dialing in your brand. Yeah. She also said as soon as she left, she's like, I'm already planning my big stage spectacle show that I'm like, awesome. I, I would go see that. I'm sure that well, yeah. can be amazing. Although she didn't get the win, she could very much have a whole, you know, like version of um, Sasha Velour. Yeah, stage exactly. Show, you know, um, so. Yeah, I do ahead. have to call out the uh, Nymphia's fan nails were amazing. Fantastic. Oh, the details. Even though, uh, it, like, um, uh, what's her face said that Michelle. another Marie, yeah, another Marie Antoinette look, like, please. But these fan nails and the, her pussy on fire was phenomenal. That's what I'm saying. It's the tiny details. Yes, yeah. Marie Antoinette, we get it. It's tired. No one's ever going to do it as well as Raja did. But like the tiny yeah. manicure and and just having the the little fire on the puss. So I great. mean. She's saying jokes without opening her mouth, yeah. which I very much love. Um, and she had, okay. a great ep- she had a great episode. She opened she up. Really she's did. vulnerable. So now I feel like our top three, Plain, Safira, and Nymphia, are all pretty like close. There isn't, you know, when Sasha Colby was, I believe, last season, right? Last season. She's, she's bringing back the crown, which is why right. I'm like, is she going to take off the crown and put on the host? But I the don't whole know. I'm time- speculating. Last season, you were like, it's Sasha's to lose. It's Sasha's to lose. It's Sasha's yeah. to lose. And this right now, I'm like, honestly, it's pretty close, which makes it very exciting. Now we have totally. Lala Perusa next week. All the queens are back. We get Mirage. I'm exhausted. We get Amanda. We get all of our favorites. I cannot. Now, Plasma's back. Here's the thing, though. If they're doing that, I'm assuming, I know it's for a big cash prize, et cetera. But yeah. is it just cash prize or is it kind of like Top Chef Last Chance Kitchen where if someone comes back and wins it, they're going to be in the finale? Oh, I don't know. I don't think it's that. I'm just saying there's lots of twists. I know. And we have I had mean, finales with four people. That is true. That is true. Because, I, but I, I don't, like, let's say hypothetically someone like Mirage, who we all think gone too soon. Right. This season comes back and everyone's hoping it that would she be dominates. Unfair. Then it'd be like, we haven't seen her do any of these challenges. That's and true. People are speculating that Maya is tweeting in a way that suggests she wins the Lollapalooza, you, but who knows? Well, it makes sense that Maya would not know how to be chill about it. <laughs> well, this is hers to lose. Like, this is That's true. her bread and butter. So I'm very excited. I can't wait. Okay. Okay. And so it's the Lollapalooza this Friday and then the finale, the, the, next it's either lala perusa this friday we, the uh usually they do a um reunion reunion before Got the it. finale i'll so, look it up knows. this yeah. isn't podcast worthy okay let's get into vanderpump rules our quick little dip in yeah to the we ho craziness um okay yeah I want very to know little to go on <laughs> but uh, i have some uh, a few notes first yeah. of all brock pipe down Oh yeah, yeah, he is defending Tom, and I get it. Like, I can see how, from an outside perspective, he might be like, "Oh, okay." Like, the producers are making them hang. So if Ariana yeah. is like pissed, but to say the line, uh, he's castrated in the corner about the way they're treating Tom. It, like, Tom's actions are what got your wife a restraining order. Yeah. Like, can we? Like, I feel like Sheena yeah. letting Tom in a little bit is what was really like getting this sympathy train for him. And I yeah. am still not on that freaking train. And I don't think I'll ever board it. No, I will gladly watch it go by. <laughs> there is watch it go uh, by. There was the moment where Ariana cried to uh, Lala and Sheena, maybe about being mm-hmm. like, I didn't do anything wrong. He yeah. broke our house. It was my dream house. And I think that's the thing that I didn't recognize so much before. They didn't, or I didn't catch that the house was that important to her. You know, all of them at the same time sort of moved to Valley Village and all of them sort of bought like similar homes to each other. So it was hard to understand like, oh, that's your dream home that you guys yeah. all kind of bought at the same home or at the same time. And when she was breaking down and saying, like, I he's acting like he deserves all this stuff. I didn't do anything. He broke our home and he wants the home that I have been like fantasizing about for like that. I was like, yeah, stand your ground. This guy sucks. Get him out of there. Like you're doing all the right things. Stay booked and busy. You're good, girl. 
Absolutely. No, I've always been, I've always understood the the perspective of Ariana of like, just because I'm not going to stay here, I don't want him to have it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I, no, I don't want to eat this, but I don't, I, I don't want to feed you. Yeah. You know? And the thing is, is you also have to think about with Ariana and the attachment to this house and like the layers of it shattering. It's like, remember when they first got together, like a big part of Ariana's origin story is like losing her dad. Yeah. And then like she just lost her dog and mm -hmm. just lost her grandma. And like, yeah. I feel like it, it represents a whole lot of things of like, this was my spot and I'm, and I'm, you know, dropping anchor here and building roots. So I feel like there's a lot of like personal backstory stuff with Ariana that like doesn't have to do with Tom of why yeah. this like house was so important. Yeah. And you never know. I mean, we only see the drama. We only see this, but you don't know what Thanksgivings they had there. Yeah. You exactly. don't know first Christmas, like all those type of things that like you have to think about. It's not just a house. Exactly. Yeah. That she's got memories that none of us will ever know associated mm -hmm. with this house, good and bad. And so why should she have to do the work to get out of there when she didn't do anything wrong in the first place. There so we go. I'm just like, if you're good living in a house with your ex, then stay there. I just worry like for mental health reasons, oh. like, you know, but at the same I time, I think they both should have had guy. to move out and then sell yeah. the house and split the diff, like whatever it is. But like, yeah, yeah. the situation, I don't know how much is stubbornness or produced. Right. Speaking of produced, this storyline that Tom and Katie are dating the same girl what? is What's so happening? is so cringe and I feel like so produced. Yeah, what's going Okay, so we have the first of all, Joe dies uh Schwartz's hair and I got blonde Elliot flashbacks like immediately of being like Elliot dyed his hair for charity and that was a one-time thing but it I, was not well done right am i crazy I, I wrote i said here's classic grace Helbig conspiracy theory did joe dye his hair like that so other girls wouldn't find him attractive yeah, anymore yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it bad looks, it looks like someone it's like when you see that you go are you okay yeah <laughs> like it looks like someone's going through stuff like uh, I've never seen the way and also too like God bless Joe she is a character but yeah. the way they like you know when and she's just doing the hair and she's just like chewing the gum and she's just talking to old Schwartzy and whatever I was like I could just feel dye like dripping down his yeah. shirt like yeah. I was just like this is not she's already been called out by Sheena at that party of like why didn't why don't you like I forget what she said of like why don't you why are you wearing a hat you're yeah. a hairdresser. Like, like you are your own walking advertisement, which I don't necessarily think, you know? Yeah. But, but the, what, what is she doing? Schwartz yeah. looked glow in the dark. Yeah. I mean, he said, give me the midlife crisis, and she did. So ask and you shall receive. But the, her, I do feel for Joe. I don't, but I also don't. We don't know this person as much as I guess we know the other people on this show to a degree. Um, her, she's left the room crying more times than not this season. It feels like, and the big conspiracy or the big um, situation is that her and Lala got hot dogs. Which my God, if we want to talk about a produced scene, I was like, this is like in a Bizarro universe where two versions, yeah. like two very different versions of like a similar type of girl are meeting up and it's like two sims characters but you dress them like different than each other and they're supposed to eat hot dogs and i was like lala what? doesn't eat hot dogs i know, I know. oh my gosh lauren oh, from utah was... she has not had a hot dog since utah here's the thing about that is you know and lala's quest of like well i'm gonna you know, me and Sandoval are going to develop a friendship because he was very much like, I'd like to be closer with you, yeah. what have you. I think Lala is doing this entire season incorrectly. Yeah, She's not strange. being a loyal girl's girl. And like, for what? And even Katie said, and like, I really felt for Katie in that moment. She was like, she means nothing to you. I mean something to you. Yeah, yeah. So why would you go get that? And here's the deal is I blame Schwartz for yeah. everything because- <laughs> Joe is clearly being fed a lot more romantic shit than Schwartz is letting on, which yeah. is, we, are, we already know him to be a liar. Yeah. I also feel like, while I don't like Joe and I would, 
while I would never trust Joe because of the whole like, you know, they were going to Big Bear and yeah. whatever. She wasn't friends with Ariana. Yeah. You know, it wasn't her place to be like, well, no, because I know that Sandoval is cheating on Ariana. You know, it's like. She yeah. wasn't friends with Ariana. She was she was lying to no one. Yeah. However, I feel like Schwartz was probably lying to her and being yeah. like, you know what? As soon as like the news breaks, the four of us are going to be double dating all the time. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel yeah. like he was like a little bit like put on a timeline. And now here it's out in the open. And she's yeah. like waiting to be his girlfriend. He needs to grow up. <laughs> he's like, I, he uh, is. Uh, unfortunately he's a libra through and through which mm. he's like the most non-confrontational and the most like afraid of conflict but by not drawing lines in the sand you just create more confusion and more upset and you lead people on and he just yeah. truly needs to like grow up um mm -hmm. but i mean yeah tell him katie yeah uh also, Lala has unfollowed Katie and Ariana on Stop social media. It. Yeah, that's big news. As of today, maybe I opened up my Instagram. That's like the first thing that popped up. And I was like, whoa, all right. Or Twitter, maybe. I Wait forget. a second. Yeah. So lines are being drawn in the sand. Whoa, whoa, Oof. whoa. Okay, this is getting big. Uh, well, yeah. I feel like, yeah, I feel like Lala came into this season and is trying. I think in her head, she's going Look at me, the fucking peacemaker. I'm yeah. like being a bigger person to like be okay with Sandoval. I'm I'm gonna get a hot dog with the girl who feels excluded. I've been that girl before. And it's like, no, actually all you're doing is being disloyal to the people who've been there for you. Yeah. In, in exchange for trying to have friendships with people who don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's uh, nothing's genuine on this show. They're all aware that they are cre they are living out a storyline that makes yeah. an edit to create entertainment. So all of it is like, oh, you're in your soft era. Okay, that's what you've decided to brand yourself so that the editors yes. have something that they can like use to move through. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's I'm I'm less and less interested every episode but we're keeping on keeping on i absolutely am too i actually am enjoying the valley a lot more Speaking oh yeah of, i haven't started it jacks opened a bar in studio city i saw my friend was there two nights ago <laughs> they have Mima's beer cheese on the menu oh, grace yeah. we are going okay okay just so you know we're going but Excellent. let's get to Whew. what i thought was a fantastic episode of Survivor. I literally finished it like 20 minutes before we started recording. Yeah. Me and Chip did the FaceTime, you know. What, it got spicy. Wow. This was, yeah, like, it. this has been like a slow season, but now we're in it. Now we're playing we're Survivor, baby. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, first of all, first note, very all of pa Ben getting a panic attack in the middle of the night. And incredibly sweet of Kenzie to be um, helping him. And also yes. shined a little light on like, they seem to have cameras on them all night long. Cause it looked like there was like a control operated camera that like, as soon as he started stirring, like went over to him that I'm like, oh, I wonder if like the circle, you know, the cameras in the walls yes. that they can operate. I wonder if they have just those set up around camp for them. I think they probably have motion sensor night vision ones because yeah. for Ben, Ben, woke himself up yeah. having a panic attack like i have panic Ugh. attacks you know we talk about it but like for it to be like waking up and how how disoriented you'd be God. i will say as kinsey's been like very meh to me this whole time like i haven't really cared one way or the other yeah. it it made me kind of be a little sweet on her Oh, and then I the fact that she her won immunity, I was like, oh, this girl is actually a contender she's getting a winner's edit right now uh-huh and have you seen her hairdos at tribal. She does With the a flower, different, the bow. Did, yeah, the she buff did a, is the bow. Oh. A buff bow, and then the week before, she took like palm fronds and made like a scrunchie with it. And everyone is like clocking that, like that's how you show off that you're a hairdresser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take notes, Joe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get some palm fronds. Palm fronds. Um, yeah, no, I thought that was really sweet, and of course, it just made me like love Ben even more. Uh, so I was very, absolutely. I was very nervous this episode you know what i noticed hmm. uh, this is the first time i've noticed it but i do think Char charlie reminds me of a young like very skinny jason bateman 
can totally see that. 100%. He could be played by a young yes. Jason Bateman. A hundred percent. I love. <laughs> oh, that is so spot on. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, I love this immunity necklace. I Me never too. really cared that much about it, but this red beaded one with the little iguanas, I was like, can I buy this at Zara? This, uh, I would love a conversation necklace right now. This is this beautiful. Is this is by far the best immunity necklace. It also kind of like it, it reminds me of like grape clusters. So yeah. it just feels it just feels a little Grecian. I think yeah. it's fantastic. This challenge hurts my feet just watching it. Oh, it is so tough. And it is so dependent on the water being still or uh full of waves. And I know. It's, I mean, this is why we love Survivor, right? Is that these challenges yes. like a hunter isn't necessarily gonna win. And right. in fact, he doesn't. So, it, and also we got to see like personality, like Q trying to start that game of naming states. That was like I a was scene from a sitcom. Up. Oh my God. <laughs> and then Tim saying, what's up, Jeff? <laughs> and he would be like, thanks for the shout out. And they're like, no, that's how black people ask what time it is or how much time <laughs> is left. Every, I was cracking up during this challenge so much when when Tim started like just shouting out people, which I yeah. thought was like kind of nice that he was even shouting out like Maria's kids by yeah. name. Like, like you can tell he like pays attention and whatnot. And then Q coming in and going, shout out to Uncle Poo Poo, my nephew John. <laughs> like I yeah. as much as many problems as I have with Q, like this moment endeared him to me because I yeah. feel like. And we got a lot of it this episode, but we mainly only see Coach Q. Right. And this was like, oh, you're making me laugh. And yeah. you haven't made me laugh. So now I see why people would be loyal to you. Yeah. there. It was like a, a moment of comedic humanity amidst yes. like a very high pressure situation. It was Even very Jeff nice. said this is the most fun I've had during, yeah. a, <laughs> during a competition <laughs> in a minute. So it was but great. With Q... When he said afterwards, so we get Maria and Kenzie win, which go girls, amazing. Um, and I also love that Maria was like, I knew that I've experienced worse pain than this. And it's like, yeah, we know we too know. that childbirth. <laughs> Three kids, no drugs, we know. However, we do have to give a little uh, shout out to Tevin because yeah. he was third or yeah. whatnot. But or like he came in. Well, he just like lost to Maria, but they were on the same team. Yeah. Um, or he would have beat Kenzie. But he had a crazy lose balance recovery. Yeah, he did. Really it impressive. It was so good. Uh, um, afterwards, Q said that he lost on purpose to test his alliance. And I don't buy that. I don't buy it at all. I think it's absolute bullshit. OK. Yeah, yep. I agree. That was my take. I was like, is this like gameplay? I don't get it. Um, I think oh. it's funny that Tiff thinks that Ben might be a sneaky agent of chaos. Uh, I wrote I was, that down too. <laughs> I was like, this is so funny because as an audience member, you're like, no, he's just like this genuine like goof guy that's just like heart of gold. But if you're on the island, I, of course, would be like, I can't trust this like happy go lucky persona. Like this is a distraction. Well, I uh, I texted Chip where I was like, Oh, uh, Ben, uh, agent of chaos. I was like, that's what you would be, you know, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. But I was also like, Ben is, I think, genuinely such like a lovable, earnest guy. And especially, yeah. you know, with the panic attack, not saying that people can't have panic attacks, but it made me go, oh, my God, it's Ben actually turned heel and yeah. was actually like diabolical. And, and we got some like I was just trying to get to top six and yeah. now it's fucking uh, on i've been playing these people i'm actually a lawyer you know like that would that be, be wild that and I, I don't think I it's wish. gonna happen but i would fucking love it i wish for that but i don't think it's gonna happen only because no. at their first tribal we get that ben like is they they start talking about the human moments that they have mm -hmm. amidst this game where you can't trust anyone and he thanks kenzie for all of the sweet and like support she gave him and then q jumps on and says that kenzie has been like overlooked in her support and her strength and her resilience from day one and all the struggles that their original tribe have 
And I was like, this is incredibly sweet that they're yeah. just like clapping for each other and like having a real, who knows what's earnest on True. this show. I mean, because let's be honest, as sweet and human as those moments were, we got to see some real scheming and some real backstabbing. For example, yeah. I knew, A, just because of his personality and because of scenes from the next last week, yeah. that Q is going to, Q thinks he is running the show. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of ways, he had been because yeah. his tribe was so weak struggling that yeah. like they kind of like turned to him for help. But now that we're merged, he's still kind of acting like he is dad. Yeah. He's the number one. And like people are over it. And yeah. for him to flip flop between people so much, yeah. I I was like. I didn't know what was going to happen there for a yeah. second. And there was yeah. when they were walking into tribal. I was like. What is the plan? T Tiff and Kinsey should take out Q. Right, because Tiff is getting, like, Q is getting on Tiff's last nerve. Like, yes. she, they're sh presenting that storyline that, like, the tension is building between her and Q. And I, yeah, I really had no idea who they were voting for in this uh, vote. And then they end up blindsiding Tim, which yeah. to me was... I was blindsided a little bit. I was like, oh, they're going with that plan. Okay. Well I could see it happening only because remember Q was a little weird about the plus one alliance that With Tim Maria. had not told Maria. Yeah. And then for them to start talking about voting someone out and Tim immediately just being like, well, let's vote out. You know, for him yeah. to immediately disregard the plus one alliance. Yeah. I think Q just thought like, oh, there's no loyalty here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so let's like go ahead and get him out. Um yeah. so I I wasn't as blindsided with that one. However, I have a lot of thoughts about the second one. Okay. Right before that though, I did oh, love sorry. that I love that Ben was like, Can I hug you, Tim? And then oh, hugged no. him and sang brotherly love. <laughs> He's a Muppet. He's a Jim Henson character. <laughs> yeah. I adore so, him. So sweet. And objectively, like, the worst moment of this guy's experience on this whole game. Yeah. And Tim, like, still was, like, could receive it. It was very sweet. But, yeah, okay, let's get to the other council because the suckiest part for Tim is that he does not make jury. That yes. shit sucks. So yes. he got out at, like, Perhaps the worst moment of the, the worst game moment, for super fans. I will also say, I was shook and butthole clenched mm -hmm. that Hunter did not pull out his idol. Same. I was shocked. They told us that he was like, I'll pull it out if I need to. And then he didn't. I was like, okay. And then he had two such, votes. Yeah. He's such a super fan that right. when he mentioned pulling it out, I was like, Hunter, I feel like is like the idea that he wouldn't make jury. So yeah. I thought he was going to pull it out just to be like, fuck, this sucks right. that I'm going to have to use it right now. But like, I will, I cannot go home and not be on jury. Right. And when he didn't and those two, ver to two votes happened, yeah. I mean, Grace, I was screaming. I was Same. throwing pillows. I was like, oh my God, this season's going to be fucking crazy. But also yep. in my mind, I'm like, yeah, you kind of got to get Hunter out when you can, because this guy no. is great at everything, potentially. And who knows, yeah, what his alliances are. But and no one knows out. he has an no one knows he has an idol. Right. And in scenes for the next, he's up in trees. Spying. I know that's my favorite I'm, thing. Go. Hunter hiding in trees. I cannot wait. This is like old school Survivor. This is like chaotic, unhinged. Anything goes, and that's all. That's what I want. I want to watch people like reduce to animal instincts on this yes, show. Yes, me too. And Chip is going to be home the next two Wednesdays. So we will oh, have a viewing yeah. party. Let's go. Okay, this next tribal, this oh. was kind of all over the place in, well, first of all, Charlie had like all arrows pointed at him because yes. of numbers. So needless to say, I'm very happy that Charlie is still with us. Spoiler Are you? Alert. Okay. I like Charlie a lot. And I actually think he is... I think he's playing the game pretty hard, but remaining yeah. very likable and kind to everyone. Yeah. I mean, for him to survive something that was so obviously his to lose is mm -hmm. a testament to how kind of he can blend in in the background mm -hmm. and not be the obvious threat. And it's also like this, these eras, everyone goes, the easy vote is blah, blah, blah. And everyone wants to be like seen as a mastermind on TV. Yes. So no one will go with the easy vote. So it's almost in your favor to be the easy vote because everyone wants to try to have a moment or make a move That's or so pull true. off a blind side. So if anything, 
opt to be the easy vote and then let everyone fall into chaos. Yeah, and go, well, obviously I'm weak. You could vote me off right now, but you could right. also take this opportunity and have my vote to to pick whatever strong player you want to take yeah. out. So it was kind of – so Tevin – Going against his friendship with Soda, I, I did thought not was think iconic. he was going to do that. I didn't either. I thought At they least were not like, now. I thought they were genuinely tight, but I also got the vibe that Soda, uh, like some people didn't like her personality. You know they what I mean? Really, like, yeah, they didn't really show us much of Soda after no. like the first two weeks. And I was like, other than Soda and Venus not getting along constantly. Right. Which, by the way, a lot of our listeners on YouTube had yeah. some real thoughts about me not liking Venus. Oh god. Uh, they had so many <laughs> thoughts. Let me let me tell you. I got Set told the that the record straight. <laughs> I got told that uh, oh I guess strong women hate strong women. Guys, Y'all. I can di- I can dislike how a player is playing the game yeah. and it doesn't mean I'm anti-feminist or have <laughs> latent latent misogyny. <gasps> I can just not enjoy the player and I think part of it was I feel like and we'll talk about this in here. Yeah. Uh, is I, I, she feels so 20 years old to me. Yeah. And that's the, like, the reason people enjoy her on the show is because she is an agent of chaos. She right. is coming uh, in. Which I get. Because everyone has started playing this game where they don't want to be too much in any mm-hmm. capacity. They don't want to have an emotional reaction. Under the e- radar. Like, too far happy, too far sad, too far, like, unhinged. Banu broke all those rules, obviously. <laughs> They don't want to do yeah, them. They don't want to do too well at challenges. They don't want to uh, right. do too well or do opt volunteer to do too many things. Everyone's trying to blend in. And then you have someone like Venus or the, at least the way she's being portrayed as a very like unfiltered, outspoken, like I'm going to play this game like old school style and play hard. And that rubs people the wrong way, i.e. Maria, who's like, don't come to me at the beach and tell me like who to vote for. And like, like very much was rubbed the wrong way by Venus, which I think everyone is rubbed the wrong way because everyone's playing a beige game, like yeah. just blending in. And Venus is like going, being blunt in a way that people are off put by. I guess but here's I, my thing is obviously I love strong women and I identify yeah. as a bitch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I actually don't. I'm actually incredibly kind. Um, <laughs> Grace, stick up for me. Um <laughs> No, 100 percent. But she your reaction is why she's a good like people are supposed to have that reaction to her. Like, that's why I guess it's like when I've seen other people who are like playing the game hard. The thing is, is I feel like it. I didn't feel like she was playing the game hard. I thought she was just confrontationally hard and yeah. like what I really like to watch is people play the game and manipulate and form friendships to yeah. be able to backstab and portray and instead yeah. it felt like she was just on like a war path where it's yeah, like yeah. well then we're not getting any blind sides from you because yeah. like people already expect you to go in guns a blazing yeah. and um and so I guess that's like I like the way Tevin is playing same like you I know? don't like people that are go like I I am not it's Look, they're all doing whatever style they want to play. It's not my favorite style that when someone goes in is like, I'm going to be a bitch or I'm going to be a villain or I'm going to be aggressive. I didn't come here to make friends. Yeah, (laughs) I like, but but obviously a huge part of the Survivor audience loves that play because they've gotten rid of it for years. So I think she's feeding a need that hasn't been uh, portrayed on the show. But I love a subversive game. I love like Carolyn. Like I love the like I love Ben. I love these like weirdos. Yeah, Yeah. these like aloof seeming weirdos that are entertaining and but also way more aware than you give them credit for. Venus is aware of everything and we know that because she shows it and says it all the time. I like when someone that I don't think is playing the game is actually playing a hard game. Like that's my jam. I guess but I guess I respect I'm the that same Venus way. plays differently. And that's well, the thing. Sorry, go ahead. No, that's the thing is that everyone does play differently. I do think that we've had tons of seasons without someone like her, and that's mm-hmm. why she stands out a little bit. Right. However, I will say, yeah. The way Venus during the soda blindside kind of claimed that it was her. See, was it yeah. you? Yes. And then was patting everyone on the shoulder and was like, love you, girl. This is why. This has made me go, oh, she's 20. 
Yeah. Like, because, and not that we haven't had young players that absolutely kick ass. I was just kind of like, you didn't make those moves. Did you, didn't you see make... Tevin literally mouth oh, the he's... word no? No. And, yes. But the thing that sucks is that Soda is the first member of the jury. So now Soda only knows that uh, Venus did that. But I have a feeling, hopefully, knock on wood, if it happens, that Tevin will have an opportunity, if he gets to the top oh, yeah. three, to set the record straight. So like, Oh, that... yes. When you say your track record and Tevin yeah. gets to go, Soda, I sent you home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She that didn't do that. That will be like a mic drop moment that I can't wait for. Oh, but it, like I immediately got like anxiety of like, I need everyone to know the truth. I know, I know. My Andy know. Griffith boy it did it. Um, <laughs> but I so did think she'll live I, another day. I did think that Soto was a good sport about being completely blindsided. She when cried she said, hard. I know, when she said, I hope you crush it, man. I was like, what? <laughs> An emotional moment. Yeah. <laughs> so sincere. It's- it truly, I do feel like keeping Venus around, at least through that, like, again, they had yeah. an opportunity to blindside. They were able to do it. Venus yeah. is is playing her game, at least as far as we've sh- been shown in the edit, so obviously, like, she's saying everything she's thinking and feeling yeah. um, that she would be an easier person to vote out down the line when they maybe are, aren't able to blindside. Yeah, we'll see. I'm we'll very see. I I I'm a big Tevin fan. I'm a big Ben fan. Big, big Hunter ben. fan. Big Hunter fan, especially if he's getting up into trees. I cannot freaking wait. Let's, Let's get, get unhinged with this season. <laughs> I also this episode made me have a sweet spot for Kenzie and yeah, also yeah. and I and I just think Maria is a freaking contender. Yeah, yeah, she's playing really well. We'll see. Yeah. I'm very curious. I think it's going to be... Sorry, I also love I know. <laughs> this is turning out to be a really good season. I'm really excited that, like, this could go a lot of different directions. So mm-hmm. I'm excited to see. And it started off kind of slow and a little, like, uh Because uh, Nami, man. Nami, <laughs> Nami, Banu, the one by... Yeah. Oh, what about... Okay, my favorite part of the whole episode, and then we'll go, Yeah. is Jeff during the countdown when it got to seven minutes went in honor of Jelinski we've yes. been going several minutes <laughs> yeah ah. he is creating a legend out of Jelinski and it's so killing there me. it is I love loved it. it well another good week of tv I'm excited yes. um man the we've got a big drag race Vanderpump yeah. will continue to have a pulse <laughs> yes i guess we'll see and then we'll have to start figuring out uh what's our next what do we watch after all of this what so. is our next uh guys give us recommendations um yeah. but oh this got Damn. fun and yep. uh this got real oh yeah <laughs> 